Hello everyone, my name is David Stewart. I'm the Engineering Director for Research and Innovation at HSSMI. Welcome to the first in a series of short video interviews that we're conducting with our solution leads to share our experiences and insights in working with the manufacturing sector over the past few months. In these videos, we will talk through some examples of how manufacturers have navigated through the current COVID pandemic and towards a position where they can come back stronger. As part of these, we will have each of our solution leads to share their own thoughts and experiences in the context of their areas of expertise. First up, I'm delighted to share with you a brief interview with our solution lead for Circular Economy, Savina Venkova. Savina, my first question is, will the events from the past few months help in resetting our thinking on traditional approaches of unsustainable production and towards encouraging a greater level of adoption of circular economy strategies? The early stages of the pandemic revealed the brittleness of many global supply chains, notably with PPE and food shortages. The circular economy holds the potential to create a more resilient world through repairability, reusability, repurposing, and remanufacture. Uh, and is witnessed by countries um, hit by the virus, being very able to quickly adapt in industrial facilities and shift production has been crucial. So going forward, I think we will be more mindful of how the life of the products and tools we manufacture can be extended and made more versatile. Uh, it's been really great to see that several local, national and international authorities, including the European Commission, the European Investment Bank and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, to name but a few, are recognizing the importance of circular economy and the new normal and the increased level of international cooperation in achieving a circular economy. Thank you, Sabina. My next question is, what are some of the most exciting recent examples you've seen of where a business has fully embraced the principles behind circular economy? Oh, naturally, the medical innovation, or sorry, the medical industry has seen huge innovations. So not just with OEMs repurposing their facilities, uh, but more specifically, for example, in the sterilizing of N95 masks to decontaminate them and give them a second life. Uh, businesses are also banding up in so-called spurred fabrication labs to innovate prototype designs and processes for medical use. Uh, with shops closed, retailers have had to reinvent their businesses as well. So Zalando and Carrefour have launched resale schemes allowing customers to sell previously owned fashion items, technology, and books. A fashion company called Dewar has taken this a step further and adopted a pre-sale method to line up supply with demand. So businesses, or sorry, buyers can express their interest in a range of prototypes. And if interest is high enough, the company will then manufacture the item. So this approach um, can be applied in other industries as well in order to cut back on the use of raw materials, but also align um, demand with supply. Thinking for the longer term, uh, it'll be interesting to see how manufacturing evolves. So we could see a rise in so-called cities of making um, or an industrial symbiosis on a massive scale, um, the way uh, China's industrial parks operate. So, um, but whatever happens uh, in terms of scale or, or style, one thing is definitely clear, and that's the future of the moment rests on cooperation and innovation. Um, so please do get in touch. Uh, if you need any help implementing circular economy innovation or road mapping, or even to help you achieve active implementation um, or analysis of specific projects. So looking forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sabina. If you would like to speak with Sabina or a member of the Circular Economy team on any of the topics raised, then please contact us through the links provided in the video description. Thank you for watching.